In this video what I'm going to show you is how to create a pattern repeat where parts of the pattern are outside the repeat. So at the, over here in the example that I've used is a spot repeat and I've got parts of that spot pattern hanging outside the edge. What I will do though is I'm going to do it using the flower so that I can show you also how to do the polygon or remind you how to do the polygon with the pucker and bloat effect or the bloat effect to be more precise. So let's have a look at that. I go into my rectangle tool and I create an 80 millimeter rectangle. Remember I spoke to you about all pattern repeats being in, in multiples of 8, so we're doing 80 millimeters or 8 centimeters. I make sure that I don't have a stroke on that and X to toggle between fill and stroke and I have a fill. What I will do is just remind you once again back to my selection tool how to open up your color libraries. So if we go into the drop down menu in the swatches panel, open swatch library and color books down to, I'm going to use Pantone, Pastels and Neons Uncoated. It makes no difference whether you use coated or uncoated at the moment. We'll just drag that down so that you can see more of the colours in there and I'll choose a lighter green. So something similar to that. The next thing I'll do is create my polygon. So coming back to my shape tools, I'll create a polygon, click onto my work area and I'm going to have one with 10 sides and I'll make it 15 millimeters. And it can be, we'll call it, we'll do it lilac. So there I have my polygon. I go into effect, puck distort and transform, pucker and bloat. And we'll just preview that and you can start seeing the start of a little flower happening there. I think I'll make it a bit of a different flower and go OK. I'll put a center in that flower so I'm just drawing a random spot and we'll make that white. and group them and I might do I've actually just isolated that so if I come into my group selection select the flower and I'll make it pink I'll do it a deeper pink than that this little bubblegum pink and we'll make the center the green from the background. Back to my selection tool and what I'm going to do is just prepare. I'm copying that. I'll rotate it a little And I'll take that one to the back, so arrange, not all the way, just behind the purple flower, but I don't want it behind the square. If I'm happy with that, I'm going to select them all. Now, because my rectangle is 80 millimeters by 80 millimeters, I need to make my keyboard increment the same size. So if I select all of those icons, hold shift to deselect the background, control or command K to get to keyboard increment and we'll make that 8 centimeters. So you can see that's in centimeters. Okay, now what I need to do is copy that whole thing to each of the corners. So Alt to the right, to the bottom and to the left. Basically got the start of my of my, of my pattern. 
So once again I've just selected, I might select the latest one actually, deselect the corner and I'm just going to drag that into the center and rotate it around. And I'll copy a little pink flower there. And because I've copied it up to there, if I rest my mouse on this square, you can actually see that it's cutting through half of that flower. And anything that happens up here needs to happen down there because that's the repeat of it. So let's copy that flower down. Alt to copy and I leap it 8 centimeters. And we're going to need something over here too. So once again I've got my purple flower poking out the end over there. So as you can see there's a little bit of the flower poking off the edge so I'll copy that to the other side. And let's copy another flower there. I need to copy it over to the top. And I'll put a few little spots in here as well. So I'll just make a little random, and we'll make that white. And again, I've got that one spot poking over the edge there. I'll just copy that to the other side. I'd like my flowers to be on top of the spots. So I select all of them holding shift arrange, bring to front. So there's just a little bit of a spot there. In fact I might select all of these spots and the background and actually go arrange center back so that those white spots land completely behind the flowers. So what I've done is, I, if you notice, I've got a spot there and a spot there. And I didn't put them too close to the edge, or I didn't put this one too close to the edge because I know that that spot will land up about there. So I'll just show you that I'll copy that across. So even though, and we'll change the color to yellow so you can see it, even though it's outside the square, I know that it's going to fit quite closely. So whatever it, happens any side of the square will follow through on the other side. I'm happy with that. So basically I've used the same principle as this pattern repeat here which is very simple and I've created using pucker and bloat I've created a whole lot of flowers and different colors and I've made sure that wherever I've got something happening on one side I'll just highlight that so wherever something's hanging over on one side, it's coming in on the other side. So we can see there's a couple of little petals hanging over in this flower. And here they are hanging in over there. These corner flowers are all one, one motif. So they're the center motif, even though they're in the corner. So to what I need to do now is actually contain the boundary of this repeat. So I select the background and I copy that. Control C to copy it and I copy it to the back. So not Control V as we normally do but Control B for back. Control B. I'll make my keyboard increment 4 centimeters so you can see this. I'll just move it up to show you that it's there. This is an 8 centimeter square. It cannot have any color in it because it needs to be the boundary. So just take note, I'll put it back behind my pattern repeat and take note that it's at the very, very back and it has got no stroke in it and it's got no fill in it. So we can take that out either here, up here when we go to that corner there or over here remembering that X toggles between fill and stroke. So I'm
just pressing X at the moment and if you watch the fill and stroke the one is coming in front and the other. So I'm happy with that pattern repeat. I drag my mouse over the whole thing and drag it into the swatches panel and I'll just over here draw a big pattern repeat of it. And there it is. So what you may see happening are these lines over here. In reality, those lines won't are actually there because of the screen resolution, not because there's anything wrong with the repeat. Once that's printed out, you won't see those lines. So it is a little disconcerting, but you definitely won't see them. And then you can go through the same processes as we went through to create, to fill the shorts and the singlet. So basically what that's done is it's actually copied the same repeat size that was on the initial garment, so the same percentage. And not that you would do a set like this. What you could do again is change colors. So we've got a green in there. We've got lilac and hot pink. Usually you won't change the color of the white at all because that's usually the base of the fabric so you'd always leave the white the same. So let's change it to a new colorway and what we'll do is we'll have a pale pink base and our main color will make that turquoise and the hot pink will make a deeper blue. Selection tool Once again, recolor artwork. So we said that we're going to change green to pale pink. We're going to change hot pink to deep turquoise and lilac to pale turquoise. And there we have our new colorway. Okay. So that is basically, you could either call it a tossed repeat or an offset repeat. Something where more, more tossed, something where you've got icons coming outside the boundary box or the print repeat and behind this whole print repeat you've got a containing boundary box that is completely transparent so that you contain the repeat.